Bill Maher had his program on Friday night, Ben Affleck was on the panel, and then uh, Sam Harris joined him for an interview. And as Sam Harris and Bill Maher were talking, uh, Ben Affleck couldn't help but jump in from time to time. Now I want to give you a sense of the whole debate here. I'll explain a couple of things as we go along, but at the end, I'll break down what I think they're right and wrong about and why. Okay? So let's start watching. Here's the beginning. These are liberal principles that liberals applaud for, but then when you say in the Muslim world this is what's lacking, then they get upset. Yeah, yeah. Well, liberals have really failed on the topic of theocracy. They, they, they'll, they'll criticize white theocracy, they'll criticize right. Christians. They'll still get agitated over the abortion clinic bombing that happened in 1984. But when, <laughs> when you want to talk about the treatment of women and homosexuals and free thinkers and, and public intellectuals in the Muslim world, uh, I would argue that li liberals have failed us. And uh, the crucial point of confusion, uh, yeah, well, thank you. Please. Thank God you're here. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the crucial point of confusion is that, that we have been sold this meme of Islamophobia where every criticism of the doctrine of Islam gets conflated with bigotry toward Muslims as people. Right. And that is uh, it's, it's intellectually ridiculous. Now, I know it was a little snide, but I, I like uh, Ben Affleck's beginning there. Oh, thank God you're here to straighten us out. <laughs> now, I, I look, I'm a person who's an ex-Muslim. Uh, I, I don't believe in Islam, that's why I left. I find it irrational and I'm not sure there's a program in the country that has criticized different actions by Muslim countries, Muslim, uh, you know, different factions, groups, etc. you name it, right, uh, than we have. But it's, and I, so I would never say criticizing Islam is Islamophobia because then I would be guilty of Islamophobia, that makes no sense. The problem is when you conflate Islam, criticizing Islam with generalizing about Muslims. Now let's see if they do that here. In some parts they do not, I think in some parts they do. So let's go forward. They even get so hold on, are you the person who understands the officially codified doctrine of Islam? You're uh, the interpreter well, of that, well, so you well, can say, well, I, this I'm is, I'm I actually, think any. I'm actually well educated on this topic. I'm, yeah. I'm asking you, so I mean, you're you, saying if I criticize that, you're saying that Islamophobia is not a real thing. That if you're critical of something. It, well, it's not a real thing when we do it. Right. <laughs> well, well, no, it no, really no, is. I'm not denying not, that, that certain people are bigoted against Muslims as people. That's, right. And that's a that's problem. Big of you. But the. But why are you so hostile to, about this? It's, yeah. it's gross. It's racist. It's, it's not. It's but it's so not. It's so. It's like saying it's those so not your shifty Jew. You're not listening Absolutely to not. what well, we are saying. You, ben, we have to be able to criticize bad ideas. And of course we Islam, do. No liberal doesn't okay, want to okay. criticize bad ideas. But Islam but why at this moment when, is the mother load of bad ideas. Jesus. So we have we have that's ideas just a like, fact. like blasphemy. It's not a fact. No. It is it's a, an ugly apostasy. Okay. So. First, I think Maher is wrong because he assumes, look, I'm a liberal, that means I'm a good guy, right? So I can't make generalizations and stereotypes that are discriminatory. Turns out that's not really true. Turns out you can. We're going to get to that a little bit later as we, the clips go on here. Um, now, some people are jumping on Ben Affleck there for saying, uh, calling them racist. Oh, well, Islam's not a race. Just calm down, dude. You know he meant bigoted. You know that there's not much of a distinction. So don't nitpick stupid stuff like that. We'll talk about the substance of polls, et cetera, in a second, right? But the most important part there is at the end when they're talking about, uh, you know, Islam is the mother load of bad ideas. Now, look, I'm against all the religions. I think there's a ton of bad ideas in all the religions. And I know Sam Harris has criticized Christianity extensively, Judaism a little less. Um, but I think that we're beginning to see part of the problem here. When you say Muslims are particularly bad, well, that's a, it's a red flag, right? Because here, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Like, because I think our stereotypes are, well, Muslims, they do the beheadings, they do the bombings, they're really bad. I mean, we're civilized over here, we don't behead anybody for a cartoon, right? But wait a minute, we launch more wars than maybe everyone else combined. I know we always say in our rationalizations, and sometimes it's true, I've been in favor of some of those wars. We say, but we're the good guys when we launch a war, it's for a good reason, it's to liberate people. Sometimes, but oftentimes not. And so why doesn't it count when we do bombing? Sometimes when we bomb someone, I've read articles here on air where the drone strike or a missile strike might hit somebody and it literally severs their head from their body, decapitates them, and in one article talked about how the head rolled down the street. Okay, now, 
They, we didn't do it with a knife, we did it with bombings. But no, no, Islam is the one with the really bad ideas. But okay, you say, well, now when America does it, it's not really for religious reasons, except for, you know, as we've talked about in the past, Bush said that he was going to Iraq because Gog and Magog were supposed to come out of Iraq. He told the leader of France that he who was couldn't believe he was hearing that from the president. So that was at least perhaps a part of the reason we went into Iraq. And remember that with fundamentalist Christianity, I think you have the most dangerous idea of out of all of these, and these are, remember, all people of the book, so they all generally agree to the same thing, which is the ending, Armageddon, where almost all of us die. But now if you're looking at those different religious groups who roughly believe that, Christianity and Islam being the two largest, who are the ones who are most excited about and has based their principal ideology about the return of Jesus Christ and Armageddon? Well, that would be fundamentalist Christians who can't and who sometimes actively try to make that happen in the world. For example, when they did a letter writing campaign to President Bush saying do not do peace in the Middle East, the Jews must have all of the Holy Land so that we can have Armageddon. Not only is that the mother load of bad ideas, I mean, that's almost literal, right? But think about how dangerous it is. It, in the pursuit of the ultimate death for the planet, they are actually doing policy positions that lead to deaths of thousands of people. In Iraq, hundreds of thousands of people with their decisions. That is also very important and also a mother load of bad ideas. So when you just point out Muslims, I don't think you're being accurate, okay? And as you can tell, I got no love for any of those religions. All right, let's keep going. Or how about the more than a billion those, people who those aren't Muslims fanatical, too. who don't punch well, women, who just want to go to school? Okay, wait a second. 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 Wait a can I, can I just express how I think? Okay, bingo, right there. That's the biggest problem in this whole thing. Bill Maher saying no, over a billion Muslims. All of them. Not a small minority, not even, you know, a significant minority. No, he said that's just not true. All of them hold those opinions. He might not have literally said all, but when Affleck talked about over a billion people, Maher said that's not true. They do hold those opinions. Over a billion people hold what radical views see that's because people who aren't muslims on it like bill maher in this case apparently don't know too many muslims you could be non-muslim and know plenty right but bill maher knows the celebrity ex-muslims that are you know being hounded etc and i know those people too and i feel terrible for them look i'm an ex-muslim but that gives me two perspectives one is when they talk about how dangerous it is for people to leave islam believe me i know that right so when they talk about some Muslim countries, they have majorities, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, would say execution is the right remedy for anyone who leaves Islam. They're talking about me. So I understand the danger. No one understands it better than I do. On the other hand, since I'm ex-Muslim, I also know a ton of Muslims. And I know that they are generally aunts and uncles. <laughs> like Ben Affleck said there, they want to make a sandwich. <laughs> They want to make sure their kids are all right. They want to have nice tea in the afternoon. They're not some part of vicious, radical, fundamentalist. No, no, if you knew enough Muslims, that would obviously be a crazy thing to say. Now, I left the religion because to me it makes no sense whatsoever, and I think that it creates some dangerous ideas in the culture, okay? But to think that all the aunts and uncles, moms and grandparents that are Muslim, over a billion of them, are all radicals. No, 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 well that's almost the definition of bigotry. So Ben Affleck is definitely right here, and Sam Harris aside, Bill Maher there, in what he just said, is definitely wrong. All right, let's continue. Well, As you say, we have 1.5, 1.6 billion mm -hmm. Muslims. Now, Second biggest religion in the world, a quarter. Well, Ben, let me let me unpack this. Let me unpack this for you. Please do. Um, I've been we have a, 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 there packed just up. imagine some concentric circles here. You have at the center, you have jihadists. These are people who wake up in the morning, wanting to kill apostates, wanting to to die trying. They believe in paradise. They Horrible, believe, bad they believe people in, that, in, yeah. in martyrdom. 
Outside of them, we have Islamists. These are, these are people who are just as convinced of martyrdom and paradise and, and wanting to, to foist their religion on the rest of humanity, but they want to work within the system. They're not going to blow themselves up on a bus. They want to change governments. They want to use democracy against itself. That, it, that, those two circles arguably are 20% of the Muslim world. Okay, this is, this is not what the fringe of the fringe. What are you basing that research on? A, a bunch of poll results that we can talk about. But, and, 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 but, they're, but they're, they also keep women and homosexuals immiserated in these cultures, and we have to empower the true reformers in the Muslim world yeah. to, to change it. And, oh, what, and, and but, lying about the, the, the link yeah, between okay, doctrine let, let and, and, and behavior and, is not yeah. going to do that. Okay, uh, let's first acknowledge and establish that that 20% number totally made up. And you could tell when Affleck said, hey, what, what poll are you basing that? A uh, series of polls. <laughs> really? Which one said 20%? Or how did you combine them to get to the 20% number? No, you made that number up. Okay, let's just be honest about that. Now, there are polls that are really troubling, which they mention later. And here, I'll, I'll, let me show you one, okay? And this comes uh, from a Pew Research Center. Washington Post wrote an article about it. Share of Muslims who support the death penalty for leaving Islam. Okay, now when you look at some of the countries down at the bottom there or at the top, however you want to look at it, Afghanistan is over 60%, uh, Pakistan is uh, right around 60% as well, Egypt. Uh, so those are really, really troubling. When you look at the other end though, almost no one in Kazakhstan thinks that, or Albania, or Turkey, or Kosovo, and the list goes on and on. So what you're seeing there is when you're overgeneralizing about Muslims, it's actually doesn't make any sense because there is an enormous range there. And by the way, most of the Muslims in the world are not in the higher end of that range. They're in countries that are either in the middle of that range or towards the bottom of that range. So when you say all Muslims, that's not true. Now that doesn't mean that the higher end of that range isn't troubling. Again, I would be the most troubled by that because I would not like to be executed, right? I think that sometimes you have cultural issues that are intertwined with religion that are really dangerous. At the end, I want to talk about how we can address those in a positive way. But the negative way of addressing that is all Muslims believe this, and then based on that poll and a couple others I saw, I'll make up a number of 20% who all are radical Islamists who would like to blow people up. That is not at all helpful or even true. We continue. They don't get covered, they don't get exposed. And they're not given the same, well, they level, of uh, one the same level of platform um, that we see the jihadists One reason in. they don't get exposed is because they're afraid to speak out. Because and that's it's the only, oh. it's the, because it's the only it. religion that acts like the mafia that will fucking kill you that, if you say the wrong true. thing, I mean, draw the wrong picture, or write the wrong book. So you do and have, that's, yeah. that's, you do have, but there's, you there's a wrong. reason why Ayan Hirsi Ali needs bodyguards 24-7. Yeah. Again, we have a double standard here. Look, uh, it drives me insane when they say, if you try uh, draw a car, prophet of, uh, cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad, we're going to kill you or we're going to do whatever to you. Uh, n under no circumstances should we bend to that kind of extremism, fundamentalism. Uh, and uh, all the people who do do that, I couldn't honestly hate more, okay? I couldn't disagree with more, I couldn't fight against them more. But when you take that group of people and then say everybody in Indonesia does it, well, it's just not true. Indonesia is the most populous Muslim nation. They're a disturbing number, a little over 10% say that apostates should be executed. That really bothers me. But closer to 90% say they should not. So when you say all Indonesians say that, that's not true. When you say all Muslims say that, that's not true, okay? So no, not all Muslims are like the mafia. And again, when we bomb people, whether it's in America, it's in Israel, it's in other Christian nations, right? Well, none of that counts because, I mean, they're doing it for religion, we're not doing it for religion. Except some of us are doing it for religion. General Boykin said that in Somalia, during the Black Hawk Down episode, he felt that he was fighting against the great Satan, but that's okay, we were going to win because we have the greater God. But somehow that doesn't count either, right? And, he, and when the Germans had on their buckle belts, Gott mit uns, God is with us, well all the Christians say, no, 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 that doesn't count. So whenever Christians do anything and they say, I am doing it because God is with us, it doesn't count. But when Muslims do something, I saw a guy with a knife, I, that definitely counts. Well, I'm sure that if they had tomahawk missiles, they would use those as well. And I'm sure that if our fundamentalists, meaning Christian and Jewish fundamentalists that are more prevalent in the West, if all they had were knives, then they might use knives. The problem is fundamentalism, not religion.
One more. If you don't understand my argument, you know, well, your argument well, is like, you know, black people, you know, they show no, no, it's that not. Is not argument. No, it's not. It's based no. on facts. I can show you a pew poll of Egyptians. They are not outliers in the Muslim world that say like 90% of them believe death is the appropriate response to leaving the religion. If 90% of Brazilians thought that death was the appropriate response yeah. to leaving Catholicism, yeah. you would think it was a bigger deal. I mean, if Filipinos were capturing teenagers and sending them into white slavery, we would criticize that. We wouldn't say, you well, they're Filipinos. You criticize the people who are doing it, not the Philippines. You know what I mean? We're, well, what if the people who <laughs> are... There's a Filipino kid lives on the street from you and have nothing to do with that. That was an excellent point by Affleck at the end. You can't argue with that. And Bill literally couldn't argue with that. And as we just showed you the numbers he's referring to, he actually got it wrong. It's actually a little over 60% of Egyptians believe that, which is still a very disturbing number, but it's not 90%. And he said they're not outliers in the Muslim world, but we just showed you the graph where they appear to be outliers. Unfortunately, there's a good number of countries with them, but the majority of the Muslims in the world do not agree to that. Okay, We just showed you the graph. Okay, now let's talk about the disturbing things, right? Uh, look. Unfortunately, some parts of the religion have bled into the culture, and some parts of a pre-existing culture have bled into the religion, and it's all mixed up. So, for example, when Reza Aslan were t was talking about female genital mutilation, uh, people said he said that it's mainly in Africa, and people got all over him because they said, no, that's not true. It's actually in some Muslim parts of the world that are not in Africa. Well, yes and no. So, yes, in some areas, female genital mutilation does exist outside of Africa. It is mainly uh, with some Muslim communities. But for example, where it happens in Iraq, Syria, and Turkey, it is mainly the Kurdish population for whom it is also a cultural aspect of their And you can tell because other Sunni Muslims that are right next to them, that are Turks and Arabs, do not do it. But the Kurds do, Kurds do, do it because they're a different culture. Okay. Now, I'm afraid that some of the religion enables that culture, and I don't want that, and I'm going to talk at the end here almost at it as to how we can fix that, right? But to say that it's just Muslims is also incorrect. Now, Reza Hassan was right that in Africa it's prevalent in not just Muslim, but also definitely in Christian culture. He gave the example of Eritrea, I looked it up, and he said about 90% of uh, Christians do it, and that's roughly right. 89% of Catholics and 85% of Protestants in Eritrea practice female genital mutilation. Those are Christians, and they do it in overwhelming numbers, also in Ethiopia, also in many other countries. So it is a cultural issue. Okay. Now, uh, again, sometimes it, it exasperates it. Now, here's what people don't talk about. For example, there's kidnappings in the Central Asian republics. They kidnap their brides. Now that involves kidnapping, oftentimes involves rape, and then the girl's parents go over there and convince the girl to stay and marry the guy. That is a horrific part of the culture, and I do believe that there are bad parts of culture and we have to fight against those. I actually believe in the culture wars, but you gotta understand what you're fighting so that you don't go in the wrong direction, okay? Now, that has existed in that culture for so long. Now, a lot of those people in this day and age happen to be Muslim. Are they doing it because they're Muslim? No, they're doing it because they've done that for thousands of years in that specific area of the world. So understand what the real problem is. Okay, look, finally, let's get to the idea of what do we do with cultural practices that are abhorrent? Female genital mutilations, the killing people that don't agree with you, the decapitations, and on and on it goes. Those are real, they definitely happen in some portions of the Muslim uh, world and in some portions of the non-Muslim world. Okay, The way to fight that is not by generalizing against all Muslims because you will alienate the local population and besides which is not true. Here I'll give you an example of how you would do that in another context and you would realize obviously it's not the right thing to do. So for example, thousands of innocent Palestinian civilians were killed in the latest Gaza incursion. Now, Israel says there's very good reasons for that and they're hiding behind the schools, the hospitals, etc. I'm not taking a position on you know, where you should wind up on that, in that political debate. But 85% of Israelis supported Netanyahu during that incursion. So if people were to say, well, that's it then. 85% of Jews agree that you should kill innocent civilians. Wouldn't you just pause for a second and wait a minute, now that doesn't sound right. I mean, that's not what they're necessarily agreeing to, and you found that one poll, but that doesn't mean Jews all want to kill innocent civilians. It depends on how you view it, right? You would never say that about Jews because you shouldn't, okay? 
You certainly wouldn't say it about all Christians, even though we started the Iraq war, a majority Christian country, America, right? It's not a Christian nation, but an overwhelming majority are Christians. We started an Iraq war that killed hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, but you say, no, 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 you can't possibly generalize about Christians that they all killed those people or led to the deaths of so many innocent civilians. So if you wouldn't say it about Christians and you wouldn't say it about Jews, why do you say it about Muslims? Because it's the same kind of generalization and it's counterproductive. I want to change that culture. Help me change that culture. Now here's the ways uh, that you can go about it that are more productive. You should be in favor of massive education. We should be bombing these countries not with bombs and missile strikes and drone strikes, but with textbooks. I don't mean textbooks with our version of history or propaganda. I'm just talking about facts, science, math, whatever else you need to educate people so they don't believe in the myths of the past and these books from thousands of years ago that make no sense today. The more you know about physics, the closer you'll get to a rational world. That's why one of the most dangerous terrorist groups in the world is called Boko Haram. That's in Nigeria. You know what it means? It means Western education is evil, is forbidden. Western education, what they call Western education, is their enemy. Because in reality, math is not Western or Eastern, it's just math. And they hate it because it leads you to facts instead of propaganda, which is what all religious fundamentalists want to fill your head with, or want to fill the head of the local population with. So you combat them by giving people the opposite, facts instead of propaganda. The other thing that you do is that you talk about secularism and how important it is. Because when you combine church and state, or in the case of Muslims, mosque and state, it is actually damaging to both parties. This is what our founding fathers in America knew about and what they were so right about. Unfortunately, our Christian fundamentalists here have forgotten it as well. But not only does it corrupt the government, but it also corrupts the religion. So many ways to make that argument effectively. To go to the local populations in Egypt, in Pakistan, and ask them, hey, do you trust your religion to a bunch of local politicians? Believe me, they hate their politicians as much as we do. That makes them go, hmm, wait a minute now, do I want that scummy politician down the street telling me my version of Islam? Then ask them this question, well, Islam has no pope. Now, why do you think the Prophet Muhammad and Allah set it up that way? Because they didn't want one guy who could be corrupted to tell you how you should deal with Allah. The book tells you how you should deal with Allah. You should listen to the book and not some authority figure who can be corrupted, whether it's a religious figure or a political figure. So don't let them corrupt Islam. Now, I don't believe in Islam, but I do believe that that's an effective argument for people who do believe in Islam. And a lot of people, and you would be surprised, and definitely Bill Maher and I think Sam Harris would be surprised at how many people would say, yes, that's a good point. I don't want my beloved Quran in their case to get corrupted by politicians, by the government, or by religious leaders who pervert it for their own purposes. I mean, remember in Islam, they don't even allow you to draw the Prophet Muhammad or build statues or paint him or in any way because they don't want you to get, get distracted by some other thing that is a false idol as opposed to being concerned about the religion as described in the Quran. So you could paint the politicians and all these people trying to be an Islamic pope but like al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS. That's exactly what he's doing. He's a false idol. Those are effective arguments you can make to begin to convince the local population to be in favor of secularism, education, so that you can root out the things that are based on the old myths and that are counterproductive and hideous like female genital mutilations and the decapitations. That's how we work to win over Muslims throughout the world so that we lead the world in the right direction. You don't do it by saying all Muslims are radical or in the case of Sam Harris, 20% of Muslims are radicalized and they affect all other Muslims. And they're so much worse than the other religions. It's not true and it is most definitely counterproductive. The minute you tell Muslims you're worse than everyone else, number one, they know it's not true. And number two, they're gonna shut down because they're gonna say, that guy's against me, that guy hates me. It is not the right way to go.